Welcome to the channel rather dubiously called Rufio. I'm the best Yugi tuber in my street, a very average player who uses this platform to trick you into thinking I'm good at and capable of playing Yu-Gi-Oh on any kind of level at all. Before we get started, why don't you hit subscribe for me, even if it's not because you secretly enjoy bad content, but because you pity me. I need every bit of help I can get. Hi guys, this is Joe here from Rufio. If this is your first time to the channel, welcome aboard. If it's not, why the fuck are you here? What's wrong with you? You came back for more? Are you insane? But here you are. Well, thank you very much for joining us in any case. If you haven't already, you should definitely hit that subscribe button. And today I want to talk about my absolutely favorite archetype of all time, Light Sworn. Absolutely no doubt about it. This is my favorite deck that I could possibly play. Every single format, I try out a different variant of it and just try and make it as competitive as possible or even just have fun with like a JD Turbo build or something crazy like that and take it to my locals and see how I get on. It is still a plan of mine to take this to a regional at some point and hopefully do quite well. I have done that before uh, when I first came back to the game. I did okay with it, but not quite as well as you would have liked. So I'd like to go and upset a few people's days using an old school good deck like Light Sworn. So we're not here to listen to me waffle on too much about how much I love the deck. I'm going to introduce you to how the deck runs, what it does, a little bit of a backstory about what the deck is about, and some ways that maybe you can make it viable for yourself going forward. Whether this is so that you can learn to play the deck, or maybe you've got that one friend that you keep losing to who's playing the deck as well, you can learn about what the key cards are in this video and give you some ideas on how the deck is built and works. We won't mess around any longer. Let's get stuck into the video. So to kick us off, let's have a quick discussion about Light Sworn, a little bit of the backstory, and just a little bit of an intro into what this is all about. So the Light Sworn archetype debuted in Light of Destruction in May 2008, a set which followed the groundbreaking Phantom Darkness and was followed by the Duelist Genesis. Light of Destruction focused on light attribute monsters, in contrast with Phantom Darkness which offered support mostly for the dark attribute theme. And this set also introduced Arcana Force as an archetype into the TCG. This set in particular is extremely special to me. This was the first seal box I got for myself and this was judge support at a time when I couldn't afford to buy the cards I wanted to. I always wanted to play a light sworn deck, but the deck was just too expensive. I was however lucky enough to pull a Ghost Ray Honest, which was pretty valuable at the time. And ever since then light sworn has remained my favourite archetype. In the story of the Light Swans, their whole shtick is that they're a group led by Michael, the Arc Light Swan, whose primary purpose is to travel through time and space, helping those who pray for help. Michael is responsible for deciding which souls of heroes are worthy of joining the Light Swans. These are various and vast quantities of magical energy to appear in the material plane and fight the forces of evil who threaten whatever place they appear in. Once they've defeated these forces, they return to their home. It would also be wrong of me not to give a nod to the Twilight Sworn monsters, and whilst I will cover these briefly in this video, they have unfortunately not had the kind of impact that we would have liked in supporting the deck. Their story is, in short, that they are Light Sworn monsters who have been corrupted by the Dark World. Light Sworn as a deck and an engine have seen year after year of experimentation, with huge varying degrees of success over time, with players such as JY Sharif piloting the engine to a top 32 finish at YCS Prague in 2017, and countless regional tops by a huge variety of fans of this classic deck. So what is it about Light Sworn that people love, and how does the deck play? Well, the deck's main focus is primarily to take advantage of the milling engine that is included in the deck, sending cards from the top of the deck to the graveyard in incredibly speedy fashion, generating graveyard resources and quickly building a powerful field that can be used to set up a strong going first board or turbo in into aggressive going second strategies. Light Sworn as a whole has been experimented with a diverse range of strategies, and whether it's a small engine to turbo through your zombies, one or two cards to complement your Eldritch build, a Chaos variant with powerful dark support, or a pure build which just wants to see Judgment Dragon blow up the board, there is a flavour of Light Sworn for all. Light Sworn's benefit from the milling of cards from the deck as it triggers various effects and helps set up their plays further down the line. Cards like Wolf and Felice can be summoned when milled from the deck, and seeing four or more Light Sworns with different names in your grave makes powerful boss monsters such as Judgment Dragon live and ready to do huge damage. 
Given how aggressively the deck can fill the graveyard, this gives a massive boost to other decks, as well as finding easy support outside of its own archetype to complement its strengths, and to make up for its own shortcomings. This video isn't just here to talk about the positives of Light Sworn though, we should also highlight what goes wrong on occasion as well so that you know how to better build your deck and how better to play against it. So as a note we should mention that the one main downside of the deck, because it is important to understand these weaknesses for ourselves, is that as it has such a reliance on milling, rather than sending specific cards from the deck to the graveyard, you can find games where you're milling all your good spells and opening hands full of Wolf and Felice. For this reason, that deck building is key and we should keep these possibilities in mind. Players should aim to control the milling in a way that is beneficial, using methods to dump cards of choice where possible, such as Foolish Burial, Mathematician and the like. Master Rule 5 looks like plenty of fun for Light Swan. The deck has suffered over the last few years, of indirect hits with the likes of Fairy Tale Snow, That Grass Looks Greener and Brilliant Fusion all being absolutely obliterated. But being able to access quicker XCs and Synchro Summons is a huge boost for the deck and both of these summoning mechanics tend to work very smoothly within the Light Swan archetype on the whole. So for the next part of this video I'd like to take a look at some of the Light Swan cards themselves. First we'll start off with the Light Swan Monsters. And most of these have an effect that causes them to mill during the end phase, as well as an additional effect. As a quick note before we get started, I'd like to note that I'm not reading the full effect because that takes too much time. However, I will show the cards on the screen for your perusal so that you can see the exact wording. It is important that you understand how these cards interact with others, and that comes down to how they are written out as an effect. So first off, let's start off with Orcus. Light Sworn Druid. Neither player can target Light Sworn Monsters anywhere with card effects, and then during the end phase, he will mill two cards from the top of your deck to the graveyard. Next up, we have Celestia, Light Sworn Angel, and when you tribute summon this card by using a Light Sworn Monster, you can mill the top four and then target up to two cards your opponent controls and destroy them. Next up, we have a personal favourite of mine, mostly because it came in Secret Rare and was one of those cards that I could just never get hold of at the time. Eren, the Light Sworn Monk. If it attacks a defence position monster, it shuffles that monster into the deck before damage calculation. And then during the end phase, it mills three. A pretty simple effect by today's standards, but was nice and cool back in the day. Next, we have one of the newer releases in the Light Sworn archetype, Felice Light Sworn Archer. It can't be normal summoned or set, and it must be special summoned by a card effect. If it's sent from your deck to the graveyard by a monster effect, you can special summon it. You can also tribute Felice to target one monster your opponent controls, destroy that target, and then mill the top three. Next, we have Garoth, Light Sworn Warrior. Each time cards are sent from the deck to the graveyard because of a Light Sworn monster effect, except for itself or any other Garoth on the field, Send another two and then draw one card for each Light Sworn monster sent by this effect. Next we have Graganith, the Light Sworn Dragon. This gains 300 attack and defense for each Light Sworn monster with a different name in your graveyard, and it also inflicts piercing battle damage. And for those of you who aren't aware, that is the difference between attack and defense is applied to your opponent's life points, assuming your attack is higher than their defense. During the end phase, you mill three cards. Next we have the short and sweet Jane Lightsworn Paladin. If it attacks, it gains 300 attack during the damage step only, and then during the end phase, you'll mill two cards. Next, we have Genis Lightsworn Mender, one of the lesser played cards from our choices that are here. So during the end phase, if cards are sent from the deck to the graveyard because of a Lightsworn card during this turn, you inflict 500 damage to your opponent and gain 500 life points. Next we have a huge staple in the Light Sworn archetype, a card that most people would agree you would play in any serious Light Sworn deck, Lumina Light Sworn Summoner. Once per turn you can ditch a card from your hand to the graveyard, and then special summon one level 4 or lower Light Sworn monster from your graveyard. And then during the end phase you mill 3. So many times you have multiple of these that end up on board and you fill a board with 5 monsters. By pitching one, target another. You just have to have a valid target at the time and then you can actually summon back the monster you sent from your hand to the graveyard. 
Next, we have Lila Lightsworn Sorceress, one that is seeing a little bit of play action at the moment. I've seen it in a few Eldritch decks at the time of recording. Interesting if you're watching this in the far future. So you can pop an opponent's spell or trap by switching it from attack to defense position, but it can't then be changed until the end of your next turn. And then during the end phase, you mill three. Next, we have Little Minerva. The Light Sworn Maiden. When normal summoned, you can add a Light Dragon from deck to hand, whose level is less than or equal to the total number of Light Sworn monsters with different names in your graveyard. Obviously, your primary target for this usually would be Judgment Dragon. You could get Gragoneth or a number of any other good Dragon support cards. If this card is sent from the deck to the graveyard, send the top card of your deck to the graveyard. And then during the end phase, you mill two cards. Next, we have the fantastic Raiden Hand of the Light Sworn. During your main phase, you can mill two, and then this card gains 200 attack if there are any Light Sworn monsters amongst those cards that are milled, and that is until the end of your opponent's next turn. This effect is a hard once per turn, so no cheating by getting multiple on boards and trying to bypass that effect. During the end phase, you can mill two. Next, we have a card that I personally have never seen played in a single Light Sworn deck, but let's discuss it because that's what we're here for. Rinyan Light Sworn Rogue. So you can flip effect, target one Light Sworn monster in the graveyard, shuffle it into the deck, and then draw one card. Next up, we've got a flip effect monster that has seen a lot of play Raikou Light Sworn Hunter. So you can flip it, and then you destroy one card in the field and mill three. Next, we have Shire, Light Sworn Spirit, which gains 300 attack for each different name Light Sworn in your graveyard, and then during the end phase, you mill two cards. Following that, we have Wolf, Light Sworn Beast, one of the most important cards in this deck. So it cannot be normal summoned or set, and it must be special summoned by a card effect, but if it is sent from the deck to the graveyard, you can special summon it. This is a really key part of this deck's flooding abilities, just milling the shit out of this during the end phase or with your monster effects along the way and filling out your field with these big beat sticks. And finally, for the standard Light Swarm monsters, we include the honorary boss monster, Judgment Dragon. So Judgment Dragon cannot be normal summon or set, and it must be special summoned from your hand by having four or more Light Swarm monsters with different names in the grave. You can pay a thousand life points and blow up all other fucking cards on the field. And then during the end phase you mill four. There is one more honorary card that I should probably mention and although it's not officially a Light Sworn card, it should be mentioned for obvious reasons. And we are talking about Honest. So during your main phase you can return this face up card from the field to the hand. And during the damage step when a light monster you control battles, quick effect, you can send this card from your hand to the graveyard and that monster gains attack equal to the attack of the opponent's monster is battling until the end of this turn. From these main deck light swarm monsters, the most commonly played are Raiden, Wolf and Lumina. Some engines will use Lila and Felice and Judgment Dragon is almost exclusively used in pure builds and builds that are intended just to turbo it out. Next we're going to take a look at the Twilight Swarm monsters. So we'll start off with Jane, Twilight Sworn General. Once per turn you can banish one Light Sworn monster from your hand or graveyard, and then target one face-up monster on the field, which then loses attack and defense, equal to the banished monster's level, times 300, until the end phase. And then once per turn, if another Light Sworn monster's effect is activated, you can mill two cards. Following that we have Lumina, Twilight Sworn Shaman. So once per turn you can banish one Light Sworn monster from your hand or graveyard and then target one of your banished Light Sworn monsters except for monsters with the same name as this one and special summon it. And then once per turn if your Light Sworn monster's effect is activated you mill three cards. Following that we have Lila Twilight Sworn Enchantress. Once per turn when a spell or trap is activated, quick effect, you can banish a Light Sworn monster from your hand or graveyard and then destroy a face up spell or trap on the field. And then once per turn, if another Light Sworn monster's effect is activated, you mill three cards. We also have Raikou, Twilight Sworn Fighter. If this card is normal summoned or flip face up, you can banish one Light Sworn monster from your hand or graveyard and then banish one card on the field. Once per turn, if another Light Sworn monster's effect is activated, you mill the top three. Finally, we should discuss the Twilight Answer to Judgment Dragon, Punishment Dragon. So it can't be normal summoned or set, and it must be special summon from your hand by having four or more banished Light Sworn monsters with different names. And then once per turn, quick effect, you can pay a thousand life points and then shuffle into the decks all cards in both players' graveyards and all face-up banished cards except Light Sworn monsters. And then once per turn, if another Light Sworn monster's effect is activated, you mill four cards. 
Mostly the Twilight Swan cards don't see any play, apart from for novelty purposes. The banishing effects tend to work against the overall plans of the deck as a whole, and so are usually a hindrance. It's worth noting that Raikou can be useful as it's a non-target in Banish, which is not a bad effect, although it's lacklustre as a normal summon, and Lila can be used in pendulum formats to keep scales at bay, but outside of this, nothing sees too much play. The in archetype choices for Light Swan are pretty limited where the extra deck is concerned. This is both a bit of a blessing in that you're much freer to make choices that are correct based on merit or viability, but it can feel a bit of a curse when you're seeing so few options that feel at least thematically correct. Although the value from playing from a playability standpoint is pretty much zero. We're going to take a look at a grand total of three extra deck choices that the deck has at its disposal that fit into the Light Sworn theme. Firstly, we'll start off with Curious, the Light Sworn Dominion, the newest of all of these. Firstly, we're going to start off with Curious, the Light Sworn Dominion. Three monsters with the same attribute but different types. If this face up card on field is destroyed by battle or leaves the field because of an opponent's card effect while its owner controls it, you can target one card in your graveyard and add it to your hand. You can only use each of the following effects of Curious once per turn. If this card is Link Summoned, you can send one card from your deck to the graveyard. If a card is sent from your deck to the graveyard by an effect, you can send the top three cards of your deck to the graveyard. Following that, we have Michael the Arch Light Swan, which requires one tuner or one or more non-tuner light monsters. Once per turn, you can pay a thousand life points, then target one card in the field and banish that target. And when it's destroyed, you can target any number of other Light Swarm monsters in your graveyard, shuffle them into the deck, and if you do, you gain 300 life points for each return card. And then once per turn, during the end phase, you send the top three cards of your deck to the graveyard. And then finally, we have Minerva the Exalted Light Swarm, which requires two level four monsters. You can detach one material from this card, set the top three cards you deck to the graveyard, and then draw cards equal to the number of Light Sworn cards sent to the graveyard by this effect. And if it's destroyed by battle, or if it's in your possession and destroyed by an opponent's card effect, you can send the top three cards you deck to the graveyard, and then destroy that many cards on the field. Equal to the number of Light Swans you milled, of course. You can only use each effect of Minerva, the Exalted Light Sworn, once per turn. Finally, I just wanted to cover a card which is basically just a spiritual Light Swan card rather than actually being part of the archetype. It's clear that it's at least based on Judgment Dragon, but its overall playability in the deck is left wanting. This card is Judgment the Dragon of Heaven. So in order to summon this, you need one tuner and one or more non-tuner monsters. And if you synchro summon this card, all materials must be the same attribute. Once per turn, if you have four or more tuners with different names in your graveyard and control this Synchro Summon card, you can pay half your life points to destroy all other cards in the field. Also, you cannot special summon monsters for the rest of this turn, except Dragon Monsters. Once per turn, during your end phase, you can banish four cards from the top of your deck. So if you haven't figured it out, this card is a Synchro Retrain of Judgment Dragon. I suppose, in terms of lore, this may be Judgment Dragon from before it was brought into the Light Sworn archetype by Michael, but this would just be pure speculation. It's also worth noting that somewhat amusingly, you can't actually play this card in a pure Light Sworn deck because Light Sworn only has three available tuners, Minerva, Raiden, and Felice, and not the four that are required for this card summoning conditions. Almost always you'll see a single copy of each of these in a Light Sworn extra deck, excluding the, uh, the fake Judgment Dragon that we see at the end there, and sometimes there's even a second copy of Minerva. It's worth noting that Curious is exceptionally strong, and it sees play in a huge number of incredibly competitive decks, and has actually found calls for it to be banned, as it can be abused in decks that use, for example, danger packages to generate huge advantage. Minerva is also worth mentioning the strengths of. It's good to keep in mind that this was at one point a prize card. This card is incredibly strong and still a favourite of Light Swarm players to this day. For the next part of this video we're going to take a look at some of the Light Swarm spells and traps. For this part we're specifically looking at in archetype support for Light Swarm and the Twilight Swarm variant at the end and discuss which of these sees the most and least play in order to help you make the best choices about which options you should consider running in any given build. We start off first with Charge of the Light Brigade, which allows you to send the top three cards of your deck to the graveyard, which is a cost, which is really, really nice, and then you can add one level four or lower Light Sworn monster from your deck to your hand. Following that, we have the Light Sworn Equip spell, Light Sworn Saber. So you can equip it only to a Light Sworn monster, which gains 700 attack, 
And when this card is sent from your deck to the graveyard, you can target one Light Swarm monster you control and equip this card to that target. So this is one of the few spells in the deck that you really don't mind being milled out. Next, we have Light Swarm Sanctuary. So once per turn, you can send one Light Swarm monster from your hand to the graveyard, then target one other Light Swarm monster in your graveyard and add it to your hand. Each time a card is sent from your deck to the graveyard, place one Shine counter on this card. And if a Light Swarm card you control will be destroyed by a card effect, you can remove two Shrine counters from your side of the field for each of those Light Swarm cards instead. Following that, we have Realm of Light. So each time a card is sent from your deck to the graveyard, you can place one Shine counter on this card. All Light Swarm monsters you control gain 100 attack for each Shine counter on this card. If this card be destroyed by a card effect, you can remove two Shine counters instead. Next up, we have Solar Recharge, which is discard one Light Swarm monster, draw two cards, and then send the top two cards from your deck to the graveyard. We have Glorious Illusion, so you can activate this card by targeting one Light Swarm monster in your graveyard and special summon that target in face up attack position. During each of your end phases, you send the top two cards of your deck to the graveyard. When this card leaves the field, destroy that monster. When that monster leaves the field, destroy this card. Next, we have Light Swarm Barrier. So when a Light Swarm monster you control is targeted for an attack, you can send the top two cards of your deck to the graveyard, then target the attacking monster, negate the attack. We also have Light Swarm Judgment, so place this card on the top of your deck. If this card is sent from the deck to the graveyard by a Light Swarm monster's effect, you can add one Judgment Dragon from your deck to your hand. We also have Light Spiral, so each time a card is sent from your deck to the graveyard by the effect of a Light Swarm monster, remove from play the top card of your opponent's deck. There is also Vanquishing Light. When a monster would be summoned, you can tribute one Light Swarm monster, negate the summon, and if you do, destroy that monster. This is a conclusive list of the Light Swarm support cards, of which only really Charge Light Brigade and Solar Recharge see play in the modern game, unless you're wanting to play a more pure list with some novelty effects. Before we move on, I'm going to quickly cover the Twilight Swarm cards. I will note, however, that these don't see much play, if any at all, only really in Twilight builds. So we start off with March of the Dark Brigade. Target one Light Swarm monster in your graveyard that has a level, add it to your hand, then banish a number of cards from the top of your deck equal to the original level of that monster in your hand. You can only activate one March of the Dark Brigade per turn. Next we have Twilight Twin Dragons. If you control Punishment Dragon, target one Judgment Dragon in your graveyard and add it to your hand. Then send the top four cards of your deck to the graveyard. If this card is sent from the deck to the graveyard by a Light Swarm Monster's effect, you can target one Punishment Dragon in your graveyard and add it to your hand. Then banish the top four cards of your deck. We also have Twilight Cloth, so target one face-up monster you control, banish any number of Light Swarm monsters from your graveyard, and if you do, that monster gains 200 attack and defense for each monster banished by this effect until the end of this turn. If this card is sent from the deck to the graveyard by Light Swarm monster's effect, you can activate this effect. This turn, Light Swarm monsters you control cannot be destroyed by battle or card effects. We also have Twilight Eraser. If you control two or more Light Swarm monsters with the same type of different names, banish two Light Swarm monsters from your graveyard, then target two cards on the field and banish them. If this card is sent from the deck to the graveyard by a Light Swarm monster effect, you can special summon one Light Swarm monster from your hand. For this next part of the video, I'm going to discuss a few more generic support cards that work well in Light Swarm. Because of the nature of the deck, most builds run a relatively tight, power heavy spell list, but there are an abundance of options that you can lend to see the deck's ability to play. Usually you'll see a much smaller spell lineup in Light Swarm builds than you might see in other decks, with a bigger focus on powerful monsters. Firstly we'll start off with Foolish Burial, and this card is pretty self-explanatory. You can dump any monster from your deck into the grave, yes please. Next we have Pot of Avarice, which allows you to shuffle back monsters in and draw cards. For a deck that turbos through so incredibly fast, this ends up being very easy to resolve and gives you more options in hand, and more options to allow you to resolve your Wolf and Felice and the like over and over again. It's also worth noting that you can shuffle back extra deck monsters, and this is a deck that can quite quickly use up enough of these to effectively get a Pot of Greed. We also have Monster Reborn, so you're dumping so many cards into the grave so quickly that being able to bring back almost any of them is incredibly valuable. We also have Reinforcement of the Army, commonly noted as Rota. 
you intend to run multiple good targets for this, including Raiden, which is often considered the best normal summon of the deck. Next, we have Starly Schaefer. So this card is particularly good in builds that want to run Judgment Dragon, as well as builds that run a more chaos oriented lineup with the likes of Chaos Dragon, Levianir. We also have the Performage Package. The Performage Package has some great synergy with the deck. Trick Clown gives you a free level 4 body on board, which can help set rank 4 plays, which are quite popular in many Light Sworn variants. It's also a light, so it has some synergy there, as well as being able to go into Curious. Damage Juggler, much like Trick Clown, is a light monster, so again has synergy in that respect, but it can also be banished from the grave to search Hat Tricker and Trick Clown, essentially giving you free extenders. Hat Tricker gives you a free level 4 body, and although it isn't a light attribute, it does work as free link fodder and a monster for a rank 4 play. There's also Electromagnetic Turtle, which is another light attribute monster that easily finds itself dumped into the grave and can offer you a degree of protection if you're worried about your opponent making a quick move for game. It doesn't see too much play now, but it is an option to consider. I wanted to end on a mention for Plague Spreader Zombie. Once upon a time, this was a must play in any Light Sworn deck. And whilst it's largely out of favour, it does still have some great synergy with the deck, allowing you to stack cards that you want to mill, such as Wolf and Felice, on top of the deck. And it gives you a free body to do whatever you need to do with it. It allows you to mill out what you otherwise would have been bricks in your hand, giving you more resources to work with. It's also worth noting that with Needle Fiber now in the game, Plague Spreader Zombie does have a secondary benefit of being able to give you an option to go quickly into this card, which will turbo out a ton of plays. The last thing I wanted to touch on was what kind of prominent variants of Light Swan are available, to give you some ideas of what you could play. I won't talk too much about variants, which are heavily based on the archetypes as an engine, because that would give us countless variants to cover. I did want to focus on ones that more a Light Swan playstyle in mind. So we start off with Pure, which does exactly what it says on the tin. You've got Judgment Dragon Turbo, or JD Turbo, as it's sometimes known, which solely focuses on Turbo and out JD. We have Chaos Light Sworn, or Twilight before it was Twilight Sworn, which focuses on getting a variety of powerful dark and light monsters into Grave and resolving your Chaos Monsters. We also have Twilight Sworn, which uses the Twilight Sworn monsters. We have Block Sworn, which uses Block Dragon and Earth monsters for explosive plays, as we've seen in various other decks, including Burning Abyss. And finally, we have the Rank 4 spam, one of my personal favourites, and usually one of the more competitively viable options. Well, that is it for the video. Hopefully this has been incredibly informative to you, if for no other reason than you decide that you want to go out and play this casually with a bunch of your friends, for a good laugh, a bit of fun, or what have you. Thank you very much for checking in, guys. If you haven't already, you should definitely hit subscribe. I would love to hear down in the comments what you think of the video. And if there are any other archetypes you would like me to cover in this fashion, as I have in this video, to give you a crash course on any deck that you like, definitely let me know down in the comments. Or reach out to me on my social media. I have Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course, I'm on YouTube. You'll find all the links down in the description if you'd like to reach out to me on those. I am pretty responsive on most of them, in particular on Facebook. Thanks again for checking in, guys, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you for watching. Hopefully you've enjoyed the garbage content I've put together for you. Enough to hit subscribe and maybe even drop a thumbs up and a comment. Before you go, be sure to check out the links in the description to help support the people who are making this channel a possibility. Thanks again for checking in and I'll see you in the next one.